Peace and love, strength and honor. Samir Saif, Ontario top team. Pow! Welcome to Subscriber's Corner on my YouTube channel. I uh, respond directly to subscribers. So today I'll be responding to Calman and his, his comment is, good stuff, man. You really know what you're doing. Capital letters. My problem is that you put this on the web for everyone to see. And the last thing I need is for some good nigga using that move on me while he's trying to rob me. Good job, way to make the world a better place. Well, <laughs> I wouldn't pick me out as the guy putting up the only stuff on YouTube, but this is for my video uh, tutorial on the close quarter chop to the neck. So enough people have liked it and appreciated it, I'll just point it out. 106 likes to 16 dislikes, and uh, I don't want to talk about those 16 people that disliked it. But again, that's tutorial on close quarter chop to the neck. 26,835 views. And to answer your question, I thought it was important because I saw so many videos actually doing this neck chop. And uh, I believe that there's, there's two forms of the neck chop. Whether you use uh, the outside of your hand or the ridge of the inside of your hand, whether you're using the wrist forearm, but a chopping action to the neck, I've seen two forms. One is uh, percussive, one is by blunt force trauma where, where the weight and force used against the neck creates disruption in the body or knocks the person out or seriously maim or kills them. Or the other one which uh, I prefer is hitting certain uh, points or meridians on the body, certain lines on the body, not hocus pocus, myth, magic or whatnot, but just some nerve bundles that, you know, when you go whammo, they go sleepo. So because I've had so many, so many comments and uh, people just, you know, saying different stuff, I just wanted to read you that one because I, I found that one particularly uh, entertaining. I'm going to go over the details again of the next shop and uh, try to do a close-up today uh, and give you a breakdown. So stay tuned, come every day, and I'll have a new video for you. And I'm saying every day for Subscribers Corner me answering, my fans, my family and friends, anyone who subscribes, and uh, we'll get to the bottom of their questions, statements or answers. So this is me responding to uh, all the questions about the neck chop and uh, where, where you should do it, how many times you should do it. So just to let you know, I've been uh, punched and chopped in the neck uh, several times. And a uh, long story of, of the where, when, how, who, why. But needless to say, they were uh, all pretty effective. Uh, so the first thing I want to point out is that there's two ways to do this. One is by blunt force trauma, uh, which is just like the, the size, strength, uh, weight, and speed, velocity that it's coming at the person. It's coming so fast and so hard, boom. And then the person is either disrupted, disorientated, or goes unconscious. And then the other way, which is my personal preference, is uh, it's just hitting it in the right place, which makes the neck snap, or the messages to the brain stop for a certain amount of time, disrupts the blood or the oxygen to the brain, and then the, the person passes out. So the first thing when you're looking at the neck is that the neck is, uh, you can attack it 360 degrees. Where you attack it will determine uh, whether the person gets knocked out or gets uh, structural damage that you know that you would have to go to the hospital for. So I generally stay away from the trachea. I, I stay away from the front of the throat uh, because sometimes when you hit too hard, it doesn't knock the guy out. Which I want to knock the guy out. I want to disrupt him and make him go to sleep. But sometimes you hit it so hard that you crush this area and uh, he can't breathe and he asphyxiates, okay? So this one would be for me a disruption where I'm chopping or hitting with the inside of my hand. My preference right away is to hit the sides of the neck and you'll, you'll see on Bob here, his turnum, he's got a band of muscle, okay? So if you ever saw that video where the karate guy knocks out the pimp, you know, you'll see him, he'll get it, he got into his stance and he chops, 
okay? So when you look at the L, when you look at the L of the jaw, if you hit right here, it's a pressure point behind the ear, when you hit at the band of muscle just below the ear like this, okay, that causes a knockout. You, you knock the guy out. When you hit the band here, the band that protects the carotid artery or the blood, blood and oxygen that's feeding to the brain and the head snap, sometimes just with blunt force trauma of chopping right here, see, you chop right here so you don't hurt your finger, or you use the, this part of your forearm wrist, you knock out the guy, but it's more blunt force trauma. Now I can turn my hand and do it this way, which is my preference again, because a lot of the times, you know, I'm in conversation mode, I'm talking, I'm waiting, and then I chop. And when I chop, you'll see that I try to find the L of the jaw. One first trauma is here. I've been punched and chopped there. It works. It makes you go like this, fuzzy in the knees, and then, you know, whatever happens, happens. But I like to snap just underneath the ear on that pressure point in the band with the band of the muscle near me. So here, getting closer to the, my favorite, which is the G20. So you've seen uh, the Marine, the Marine video where the guy says, you know, stands his butt here, and he's, you know, he goes and chops the guy right in the side of the neck. That's more blunt force trauma. Now, when you're in line here, okay, this, this can cause a knockout right here. So blunt force trauma is here, but it's just a weird angle, so depending on your height, and the height, you know, the taller they are, and the more angle you have of cutting 45 degrees towards the heart, you know, so if I've got a bit of an angle here, and I go, you know, so it's right in here on a 45 degree angle, but I'm driving towards the heart, so the guy's, you know, taller, and I, and I chop him, that can cause a knockout too. Now here's the danger zone. We're getting into danger, and uh, I strongly suggest that we don't do this. Like, I strongly suggest that we don't do this. And that I'm just showing you for scientific reasons and, and uh, the questions you ask so that you could avoid making this mistake. So you have the mastoid process, the brain stem, but you know, you've got the skull and then, you know, the neck is here in the spine and you can count to the fifth and or down to the seventh. So you'll see like the old Romans, you know, they put the sword through and it goes to the heart and lungs, but they sever the spine. But any type of palm or fist or chop, to the back of the neck can can kill a person and can sustain you, know, you can sustain a lot of damage to the spine and that's what you have to be really careful of and the reason why we don't generally you know people aren't dropping uh, dead left and right is most people actually and, and I've seen fights like this where the guy's back's turned and they actually will still try to punch the guy in the face it's it's actually kind of retarded. But thank God that people are retarded because if they realize, you know, if their instinct wasn't to like have to look and punch the guy, keep punching him, and one of them just had the bright idea of going, he'd go to sleep. So most people are punching, which is good for us too, because the open hand is way, way more effective and durable. But the, the gallbladder 20 or G20 point, you know, I always go with the earlobe and that band, so you'll see you have two bands on your neck, and I find it right here. So if someone's, you know, fighting or grappling here, you know, if I can, you know, it's almost, instead of the Vulcan's, the Vulcan pinch here, you know, you're doing the pinch here, but it's a downward chop to 45 degree angle towards the heart and lungs. But it's just that. Sometimes, just that makes the guy go jelly in the knees or makes him go to sleep. When he's facing you, you know, to get that angle is a bit awkward. And that's why when you're talking, you're blading, he's getting that little curve, and you'll see that little curve goes behind the ear, about 45 degree angle, but no bladder 20 is right there. So that's why most people are chopping to the side of the neck, or chopping uh, right behind the ear, the jawline but most of them are not going to get that chop. So just, just to reinforce, any type of chop, G20 
to the back as you, as you get behind the ear can maim someone, can paralyze them, can kill them, can interrupt the messages that go to the lungs and heart. You know, because you're, you're starting high up on the neck, so you'll feel like this little, this little uh, block here, and then when it's here, so you've got the fifth and the seventh in the spine, and, and those are tricky. But if you open your palm and give him a Gerber slap, that, that, we call that a Gerber slap because he eats baby food after cup your hand, uh, he'll go to sleep also or be disorientated. So I hope that answers all your questions uh, that you've had so far on my neck chop and I hope you super share this video now that I've given you a lot more detail and please share, subscribe and like and uh, comment. I'd like to hear your comments on my new and revised detail on the chop. And uh, this is my answer to you, the subscriber. So come back to uh, Subscriber's Corner, where I will have more videos and more answers for you. Peace and, Peace and love, strength and honor. Samir Saif, Ontario Top Team. Pow!